Okay, match four with Kaldatha Jeskai. We're on the draw. And our hand is a one lander with three prophetic prisms. We've got a removal spell and two of our creatures. So we have something to remove their first creature. And then we have to wait for a land so we can start playing this stuff. We have a lot of value. I think I like this hand. It's not great. It's a little bit greedy like another hand that we kept last match, but I think it's good enough. They lead with Ponder. And they do not shuffle. Alright, another Galvanic Blast. That's not a land. And they pass. Interesting. Firebolt. All right, well, I'm going to be wasting a spell if I just discard here. So I might as well hit them for two. Then again, that doesn't let me leave up burn during their turn. What should I do? I think I'll go ahead and discard a prism. Preordain. I'm really not sure what our opponent's playing here. I would guess Mono Blue Delver, but... They haven't had any creatures yet, which is a little weird. They go top and top, so I'm expecting it's some sort of blue-black control deck. Alright, try to resolve Prism. Very nice that the land that we drew was untapped. Our opponent's playing Force Spike, okay. So that's almost certainly Mono Blue Delver, because the actual control decks don't typically fit, play Force Spike. Yep, there's the Delver now. Okay, I'm going to Firebolt that, and then I get to Galvanic Blast a Spell Starter Sprite in response. That still doesn't work, though. Oh, yeah, that'll work, because they'll have one Fairy, and then they'll have zero. Okay, hopefully they don't have another Force Spike, and they don't. So we get to get rid of their creatures, which is very good for us, obviously. I wonder if our opponent sideboards out for spikes on a regular basis, since they're so much worse when your opponent knows about them. Alright, get to play a prism. Hopefully this won't get countered, because we need it for metal craft, so we can take down the spire golem with a blast. Alright, our opponent's going to gush to try to look for counter magic, apparently. And they do decide to counter it, okay. Well, at least we set them back on mana production. That's something, I guess. Delver's Secrets. Four cards in hand, one of which is an island. Ponder. They choose to not shuffle again. Obviously not a good sign for us. Journey, okay. I'd rather resolve a creature here than play Journey. But I guess I could do... Well, I can't do both because I can't pick up this white source and replay it and have it untapped. I think I'm going to try to resolve a core Skyfisher here. And I could gain a life or I could pick up this Furnace. I don't really want to telegraph that I have two red spells. Although I guess that could also just be telegraphing that I want to pay for Force Spike. But I'd rather just gain a life here. If our opponent has Spell Stutter Sprite, we want to blast and then blast again. Then obviously it's worse for us. Okay, they reveal a Force Spike. So they play the other island that they had from Gush, so we don't know any cards in their hand now except for Force Spike, which they just revealed. Planning on blocking Spire Goal in this turn. Taking three and then Casting Journey. I could also f Galvanic Blast the uh, Insect just to get the Force Spike out of their hand, but I think I can play around it for the rest of the game pretty easily, so I'm going to try to. Please no Spell Stutter. Spell Pierce. Wow. 
I did not know that they played Spell Pierce's main. That's interesting. Okay. I think I'm going to play this. It's kind of awkward. I need the mana, but I think I'm actually going to cycle it. The problem with it is I want to get to Metalcraft on these Galvanic Blasts. Alright, so they have a Force Spike in hand. And two other cards. They snag our core Skyfisher. We go all the way down to 11, so I think at this point we're probably going to have to run into that Force Spike and force them to use it. Because we can't afford to just stop using our mana entirely. Start with Skyfisher. Well, now here's the really hard choice. Do I gain a life, or do I... I think this time I have to pick up the Furnace, since I know for a fact they have the Force Spike. And then I can plan on getting rid of that uh, Insect Alibration on their turn. I could do it on their upkeep if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. It's important to uh, try to get rid of these. Actually, I'm going to do Galvanic Blast, since I only need the two damage. It's important to do this in the attack step rather than the block step, because otherwise they can ninjutsu in Ninja of the Deep Hours in response and remove their creature from being a target of the spell. Alright, they've got Force Spike and one other card. Another Skyfisher. Just get some creatures down. I don't think I need to be able to bolt this turn, so I'll just gain a life. Now our opponent can attack us if they have a single bounce spell like a Vapor Snag or a Snap, but I'm okay with that. I need to start attacking at some point. Alright, they stay back to block this time. And... What now? Could try to play a Glint Hawk, but I think I'd rather Icker Wellspring try to hit a land. Alright, that resolves. We could attack just to hit, hit him for two, but then get hit back for two. Even though we have Burn in our hand, I don't really want to do a damage race right now, I don't think. I think I'd rather this game go on longer. Yeah, I think that's best for us. I'm just going to pass. Fairy Miscreant. Alright. This might be the point where I want to start forcing him to use that uh, Force Spike if he has it. So I think I'll start by getting rid of this Fairy Miscreant. One less creature for us to worry about. And I'm okay with trading this for a Force Spike, I think. Because I don't really need the Bolt. I just need the Blast to take down the Spire Golem. Alright. We have the Metal Craft. Let's see if this works. Or if they have a Counter Spell. Okay, perfect. So now we can actually attack. Fine trading 4 damage for 1 damage. And hopefully it won't even be trading it for one damage, because this Glinthawk should resolve. Would be nicer if this was a prism right now, so we could filter this to white mana, but unfortunately it is not. Could have also picked up a, a Great Furnace there and replayed, or not replayed, but played this other Acre Wellspring. That might have actually been better. I'm not sure. Alright, we've got Bolt Protection. I like that. Get rid of that, just so he can't do any Ninja of the Deep Hour silliness. He can Force Spike this if he likes, that's fine. Gain some more life, and now we have Lethal. Our opponent has two cards in hand to deal with it. Alright, Hardcast Ninja. Which can't block any of the Flyers. So we get to make him make the first move, or we get to make our opponent make the first move. Alright, and we win the game, and we get to go to sideboarding. So once again, we just did this, 
We want three pyroblasts, two electricery. A negate, potentially. Two core sanctifiers. Possibly we don't want to negate versus their version of this deck, since they have spell pierces and four spikes. We'd rather just pay the mana. And we don't really want to be fighting their counter magic so much as just having mana available whenever we cast things, so we can pay the extra costs. I'm going to take out two lone missionary. Good against um, Ninja of the Deep Hours and nothing else. Two Cold Off the Rebirth, same reason. Core Sanctifier. Oh, I didn't mean to bring in these Core Sanctifiers. I meant to bring in this journey. That's why these count, the count was off. And the two Acre Wellspring. The only odd thing I might do is not play Negate, even though they have Counter Magic. Since their Counter Magic, as I said, is of the type that uh, makes us pay rather than mostly counter spells. But I think I'm going to go for this version and see how it, it does. Alright, we're on the draw. It's another one lander with two burn spells. And now that we know that we're what we're up against, I think this is fine. We have protection against turn one Delver. Having a land light hand is really awkward against four spike if they left in their four spike and spell pierces, but having that protection against the early creatures is pretty good. We draw another land, so we're going to do just fine this game, I think. Another Delver. And they missed their land drop. So I'm not going to give them the opportunity to untap, I don't think. Well, I guess I could. I'm trying to decide whether it's important enough to just blast this off the table now, or if I should play a 2-drop. I think playing a 2-drop is fine, I guess. I actually should have played Wellspring there, I'm not really sure what I was thinking. I meant to go click Wellspring and then I just clicked Core Skyfisher and went through the motions instead. Kind of awkward that I set myself back on mana for no reason. Especially with a Moldrifter in hand. But our opponent didn't flip the Delver, so it might be okay. They did draw on the land, though. Curse of Chains. Okay, that's an awkward removal to bring in versus our deck since we can just pick our creatures up again with the uh, our Core Skyfishers. Alright, I'm going to Galvanic Blast this while I have the chance, I think? Or am I just going to play a 2-drop again? I suppose I could just play a 2-drop again, that's fine. If he wanted this uh, Core Skyfisher gone so bad, it certainly shouldn't be good for him that I'm playing a new one and putting the old one back into my hand. No flip of the Delver yet. Electricery. Alright, this could be pretty good for the blowout. So I'll Galvanic Blast it, and then when he Spell Stutter Sprites, I Electricery once it enters the battlefield. Well, just as a spell. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and go for this, or do I want to wait? I'll wait for his upkeep, but I will do it in response to the trigger instead of after the trigger resolves. This makes him pay for days or spell pierce or force spike on his turn instead of ours. Opponent takes two. Go ahead and try to elect electricery this while I have the chance. This is a little bit worse against spell stutter sprite specifically, but I imagine our opponent just would have spell stutter sprite in response to the galvanic blast. Unless they were predicting this exact scenario, which they were. Alright, well played. Alright, and they get a Ponder. And I draw another Electricery, okay. Play a Wellspring. And I'll do this while they're tapped out. Can take off the upkeep stop. Pyroblast is obviously a great draw. Still need to find some blue mana for these two mold drifters, but when I do get to cast them, they should be great. Our opponent does not shuffle with Ponder. Plays a Delver. 
If they did not shuffle with Ponder, that means they're set up to probably flip this Delver. Forgotten Cave. So I think I'm going to attack. Do I want to be trading damage for damage if they flip this Delver? Or do I want to try to block it? I probably want to try to block it, unfortunately. Our opponent's stuck on land, so it would make sense for us to try to press the advantage, but we can't even cast our spells right now. Our most important ones are these two Moldrifter. So maybe I want to be the control deck here. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Of course, Skyfisher, pick up the Wellspring. Pyroblast that out of the way. I'm going to play this Forgotten Cave, because although I do not have blue, I will eventually have blue, and I, I need it for casting Moldrifter. Alright, our opponent has a counter spell to flip the Delver with. We are going to trade. I suppose I could have attacked last turn, since I would have had one anyway. This is better against Snapper Vapor Snag, though, since I would still get a block no matter what. Alright, perfectly fine with him countering a Wellspring, so I'm going to run that out. Alright, they decide to go for it. Cycle of Forgotten Cave. Windscarred Crag. I guess I'll play it. It's not a blue source, but... I might need that mana. Preordain. Will our opponent finally fit, hit their third land drop on their eighth turn? They go top top, and they do hit the land drop. Fairy Miscreant. No follow-up. Okay, Glint Hawk. Alright, well I'll attack. Alright. Still no blue mana. Quite unfortunate. But we're winning on the board state right now, which is fine. Vapor Snag, okay. Our opponent might be trying to ninjutsu in a ninja of the deep hours here. Yep, that is exactly what they're trying to do. Which they could not do if we had blocked. They get to draw a card, deal some damage, see if they hit a land drop. They do, which means Fairy Miscreate comes back down. Poor Skyfisher. Alright, I can use that to pick up Forgotten Cave and cycle it, which is nice. I could also just use it to pick up Windscarred Crag and gain a life. But I think drawing a card is better. Another Glint Hawk. Okay, well this works out well for me. Because I can take back the Ancient Den, find another White Source and just completely outclass their creatures, hopefully. Uh, yes, I will return. I'm going to trade off with this ninja if they give me the option. Spire Golem. Okay, well that does a pretty good job of shutting down our Glithawks from attacking. Alright, there's a Bolt. So do I just attack all out? If our opponent can counterspell this lightning bolt, and it has to be counterspell because spell pierce isn't going to do it, spell stutter spry I guess would also do it. I want to press the advantage, but it's just kind of horrible for us with if they have spell stutter spry or counterspell or deprive. I guess I can attack with just the two two threes. That seems fine. Then I still have blockers back for the ninjutsu, or, or the ninja and the fairy. And getting in for two a turn is still pretty good. Alright. They're going to double block to trade a fairy for the uh, core skyfisher. That also puts a damage on the spire golem, though. So I can try to go for this now, post-combat. And it works. Great. 
So now we have six power in the air versus eight points, or eight points of life total that they have. So they're definitely going to need to find some vapor snags or something. We find a blue source. It comes into play untapped, uh, but that's what all our blue sources do. And I think we've got this game, because we have three lethal threats. And our opponent didn't do anything last turn cycle. See if they can draw something. And they cannot. Wonderful. Well, our 2 2 and 2 3 flyers prey upon the 1 1 flyers and yet again. And we take down match 4. And we're going to go for the awesome 5 0 if possible. <laughs> 